began last week, we started with a Kriya from the tradition of Kundalini Yoga, which was designed to connect with prosperity for the new year. Um, this week, I want to start again with another Kriya from that same tradition. And um, just as, as a reminder, Kundalini Kriyas are essentially weaving together a movement pattern. Sometimes today it'll be a, a mantra, so words with um, breathing technique. And then all those are woven together with the expectation of getting a certain result, right? So the Kriya that I wanna work with as we begin our practice is one that releases the old year and creates space for the new year. I thought that was appropriate as we embark on another year and leave 2020 behind. So, um, so as long as there's no questions, I am going to mute early on this one. So that way, if you choose to chant, um, you can do so without um, self-consciousness. And if you don't choose to chant, that's okay too. So did you have any questions before I get started and mute us? No, I'm okay. great. Thank you. Okay, good. So we will just mute quickly. Okay, here we go. Great, so for today's practice, just to gather close to you, we will be utilizing a couple of blocks if you have them. And I always enjoy setting a nice cushion or blanket underneath my seat as we center and um, That'll be nice because the Kriya will be done from a cross-legged seated position if that's comfortable for you. And so to start, let's, um, let's just bring one hand to our heart and place the other hand down, pressing it into the ground. If your hand doesn't reach the ground easily, you can grab a block and just press downwards there. But we've got this one hand to heart, one pressing down into the earth. You can invite your chin slightly inwards and invite your eyes to close here. I'm just taking a few breaths, bringing yourself here into this present moment. I'm just feeling each breath fully in your body. So notice how your body responds to your inhale. You might notice those three chambers of your lungs inflating. So we've got our lower chamber, we've got this mid chamber of the lungs and then the upper chamber up by the collarbone. And as our lungs are able to fully inflate with the inhale, we'll feel movement often in our abdomen, our side body, even the back body responds as we breathe inwards. And so just let yourself take a couple of nice, deep, full, complete breaths here. And as we create this space to breathe fully in, we create the invitation to fully release your breath outwards. And shifting our focus away from how the body responds to our inhales into noticing the way your body responds to this emptying, into this exhale. And sometimes just this simple act of breathing can help bring you into this moment away from worries that might cloud your mind. And sometimes even away from discomfort in the physical body. And here, as we begin this maybe first practice of the new year, you might set an intention for yourself, for your practice this year. 
And your intention could be anything you desire from your practice or a commitment to. My intention for my own practice this year is to expect less perfection. And just to meet myself on the mat as I am each day. And so here, bringing both hands to heart center. We'll take the sound of OM. You can listen or you can join in. Set and seal your intention. Om. And then releasing your hands down, draw your chin in. Allow your eyes to open. We'll lift your gaze up. And we'll just take this movement into a nice and simple neck roll. So rolling around. And as we're rolling here, just noticing areas in your neck or your shoulders where you might be holding some extra tension, just inviting a release there. And the next time you find your chin coming towards center, we'll pause here and then rotate in the opposite direction. So to bring yourself back towards center here, we're gonna take the right hand, bring the right hand just to the curve of your neck so that the top of your hand is connecting with that lower curve of your skull. And just begin to lean back into that right hand. Might even take the left hand, lean it onto the floor or onto a block behind you to support that lifted chest, leaning and then lengthening. So as we lean backwards, take that right hand and just ever so slightly tug that hand upwards. If you're trying to give yourself a little chiropractic adjustment. And then bring yourselves back to center here. Keep that right hand behind your head, right elbow pointing upwards, and just lower that right elbow towards the left knee. So we're going to inhale, open your right elbow, lift your gaze upwards. Exhale, bring that right elbow down. It's not necessarily going to connect with the left knee, but we're just making that intention, that reaching across and down and across and up. We'll do one more time here. The next time you rise up, let's release that right hand. Stretch the right hand out to the right. Really stretch and extend through all five of the fingers on your right hand. And as you stretch those fingertips outwards, squeeze your right shoulder blade inwards. You want to feel that right shoulder squeeze towards the left on your back body. Good. Big inhale here. And let's exhale, release your right hand down to your lap. Let's roll the right shoulder. Let's the right shoulder a few times here. And then we'll switch the direction, rolling that right shoulder forward. Good, taking now the left hand, same action on the left side. So just gently cup the back of your neck, feel yourself supporting that lower curve of your skull. This is going to lift upwards here. So the side body is starting to lengthen. Our heart and sternum are starting to lift. Maybe that right hand wants to come back and support us into a little arch of our spine here. And so just finding that light, light traction that you're creating with that left hand pulling ever so slightly lengthening into the neck. Nice big inhale and exhale. So here already beginning to open up our lungs. And we're getting to massage our deepest thoracic lymph node, this deep connector of our immune system. Let's inhale, long spine, right hand comes to your right knee if it's not there already. Keep your left elbow lifted. Lift your gaze, looking up and to the left. Big inhale here. As you exhale, find that curving forward, trying that left elbow towards the right knee. So it's an inhale, opening, lifting, looking up. Exhale, hugging inwards. <coughs> Excuse me. Good, one more time, nice big inhale, 
Exhale, curling inward. Coming back to center here, release that left hand down to your left leg. And again, just rolling into the shoulder. A few times backwards and then reversing that direction of your roll, rolling forwards here. Good, and here, maybe just leaning into the hands, releasing your legs forward, take a nice little bounce into your knees. A wiggle into your toes and your ankles. We will be seated as we roll into this Kriya that's coming next, but I want to give your legs a moment just to get the blood back if anything might have fallen asleep here. And then as we bring ourselves back into your comfortable seat, and it, again, I'm cross-legged, that's comfortable for me. You could be kneeling if that's more comfortable for you. And you might Reverse the cross of your legs here. So taking the opposite leg forward, opposite leg back. That's if you're doing that cross of your legs. And so as promised, our Kundalini Kriya to release the past and to step really fully and presently into this present moment, clearing the space for all of the blessings that the year ahead has in store for us. And so along with our movement and our mantra, this Kriya involves a visualization. And we've done this in class before, so it should look a little familiar to you. The visualization is we will just envision this beautiful crystal clear pool of water in front of us, okay? And what we'll be doing is we'll be taking our Buddha hands and sweeping that water over each shoulder. And so the movement here is we're going shoulder, shoulder, shoulder three times. The fourth time we sweep, it's going to go over that arc line, over the center of our body. And so it's sweep, 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 center, right? And I've warmed up enough to take off my morning sweater. So, okay, so the visualization then is this beautiful, clear pool of water. The... Mudra is this little bowl of hands and the movement is a sweeping. So then we layer on the mantra. And then this is something that if you're at home, you're welcome to chant. Uh, I can't hear you. You're muted. And if you prefer to listen, you're welcome to do that too. So I'll say it a few times so we can get an idea of what these um, weird Sanskrit syllables are. And then we'll roll into that Kriya and into the practice. So the mudra is wa he. Guru, it's G U R U with little roll and R. Wa he guru, three times. So these are our over the shoulders. Wa he guru, wa he guru, wa he guru. And that fourth time is wa he geo. Wa he geo is over the head, right? And the geo, that, that's our joy. That's the joy that we're inviting inwards. And so just allowing here your eyes to close, finding our starting position, this hands and Buddha bowl, this visualization of this beautiful healing, cleansing pool of water in front of you. And then you might even begin to visualize these little arcs of lines. So in the Kundalini tradition, we're clearing the arc lines. We're clearing that which is pulling and keeping us back. We're clearing those arc lines for the future, this beautiful arc line going forwards and backwards above your head. So with that visualization in mind, we will begin our Kundalini Kriya. Nice big inhale. Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Guru, Wahe Jiya. 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 
One more time. Wahe guru, wahe guru, wahe guru, wahe jiyo. Good. Bring your hands to heart center here. Take a big inhale here at the top of your inhale. Gently retain your breath inwards. Squeeze your muscles in towards the midline, pressing that vibration of this mantra into your heart center. And then exhale. Bring your hands down to your knees, begin to curl into your spine. Use an inhale, pull your heart forward, lift your gaze upward. So just transitioning into our seated cat and cow. And here, if you do have something, a cushion, a blanket beneath the seat, it might feel better to release it. You're welcome to keep it if that serves you. And so we're inhaling forward, exhaling back. Good, bringing it forward next time. Let's switch our hands from our knees to our ankles. And same movement with the spine. So still an inhale forward, exhale back. Good, bringing yourself here to your neutral spine. Neutral spine, and let's begin to transition to our hands and our knees. And at any time you come to the knees, you can use a blanket if you need it underneath your knees. So we can here to take that cat cow movement from our kneeling position. So nice inhale, arching your spine, exhale, rounding, releasing the weight of your head down. Good, bringing yourself here to a neutral spine, gaze directly down between your thumbs. Let's begin to bring your left hand and left knee slightly in towards the midline. It's gonna create the space to lengthen your right toes behind you. Rotate right heel down, bring your right hand to your hip. So we're transitioning to a little variation of our side plank with our knee down. Let's stretch those right fingertips up to the sky. Good, so we might stay here, right hand stretched up. That's of course, unless that causes pinching in your shoulder, in which case, keep that right hand in your right hip. And then maybe that right knee wants to lift up, that right heel lifting up, bringing that heel up to hip height here. Nice breathing here. Good, if that right heel is lifted, let's begin to lower your right heel down. That right hand is lifted, return to your hip, bringing yourself back into tabletop position here, hands and knees here. And we'll inhale, lift your gaze, pull your heart forward, exhale, rounding inwards. And just a couple resets here with our chakra vakasana. Let's bring ourselves back towards center. This time, right knee, right hand, come in towards your midline. Left leg lengthens. Plug the toes down, rotate your left heel down. Bring that left hand either to your hip or up here. Good. And playing here, just finding here what your body needs in this side. Maybe this side, the left foot wants to stay down. Maybe we want to peel that heel upwards to hip height on the left hand side. Breathing here. Good, and if that left heel is lifted, let's begin to lower the left heel down. Bring that left hand back to the hip. If it's not there already, bring yourself back towards center, back into that tabletop here. Again, inhale forward, exhaling back. Keep finding more and more mobility in our spine. We're gonna move through this sequence. 
Good, bringing ourselves to center here. Gaze down. Let's bring both elbows down to the ground. Palms could stay flat here, or they might choose to interlace. The elbows down, gaze is forward. Let's begin to be, be, bring those hands up to your chin. Right, so almost looks like a school picture day, right? Hands underneath your chin. If that's uncomfortable, so we're hands and knees, hands beneath the chin, you might instead bring your hands to the cheekbones, supporting yourself there. So for some of us, that little curve in the cervical spine is going to be too much hands to chin, in which case heels of your hands to the cheekbones. You're just kind of resting here, forcing a smile into your face. And wherever we are, hands to cheeks or hands to chin, just a nice deep breathing here. Good, release your hands back down. If they're not there already, return both forearms to the ground. Let's lengthen your body long behind you. So lengthen your legs long, lower your hips down, unwind those fingers if they're interlaced here. So coming down into our cobra pose, and we'll just begin to bend and straighten alternate knees here. And straightening alternate legs. And so again, we're just slowly awakening that front body, awakening our back body, creating some extra space in our lungs here. Good, and we'll pause here, both legs down. Now, if you have discomfort or pain in your low back, go ahead, take your heels wider, maybe as wide as or wider than your yoga mat. That'll relieve some of that. And so option to stay here. Arms bent, elbows down underneath the shoulders. Or we might take this into the yin yoga tradition, which is our seal pose. So as we come into seal pose, we're going to lengthen the arms nice and long. So no real bend in the elbows here. Palms are down and wide. So my palms are wider than my yoga mat. And then coming into seal, in yin yoga, you kind of hang out. So you can just let yourself collapse into the shoulders a little bit here. It's gonna bring the shoulders slightly up towards your ears, create a nice little stretch into your fascia and breathing deeply here. So again, this might be where you wanna be. You might wanna stay in that sphinx pose with your elbows down. If this seal becomes too much for you, always the option to just release your elbows down here. And whether you're up in seal or in your sphinx pose, we return to the breath. Nice big inhales, full complete exhales. All of these poses this morning really designed to activate your body's natural immune system, create more space in your heart and your lungs, more heat in your body, and more energy rolling into this new year. Let's begin, if they're not already, to release your elbows back down. Curl your toes under, bring your body back here into our tabletop position. Good, and then just naturally back into this movement of the spine, always returning to this little hub of our wheel, the chakra vakasana, cat and cow. Good, and from our tabletop position, let's begin to draw the left hand, draw the left knee in towards your midline. Extend your right toes back, rotate that right heel down, right hand comes to the hip, this looks familiar. Good, option to stay here, peel that right heel upwards, maybe that right hand wants to reach up to the sky. So very much where we were a moment ago. Here, if you'd like to take this a little further, bend into your right knee, reach backwards with your right hand, take a hold of that foot. So all these options. If you have your foot, you might stay right here. If you don't, breathing deeply wherever you are. Third option is you might kick your right foot into your right hand. It's gonna arch your spine inwards. Maybe the gaze lifts upwards here. Nice deep breaths wherever you are. Good, and releasing. If you have hold of the right foot, releasing here. Stretching each limb outwards and then bringing yourself back towards center, back into that tabletop, into that cat-cow.
Good. And then taking opposite hand inward. So now right hand, right knee come in towards your midline. Left leg extends, left heel rotates down, left arm peels upwards. And then maybe that left heel lifting here up to hip height. This nice breathing here. Little quarter moon pose just on one knee might stay here, or we might take that option bending into the left knee, reaching back with your hand, joining hand and foot behind your body, and then maybe even kicking your foot slightly away from that torso. A big opening happening here. And if we have that bind, if you have foot behind your body, release here, lengthen your arm upwards, your leg outwards, and then use your exhale, bring yourself back down to the earth. Nice inhale here, arching your spine. Exhale, rounding. And bringing yourself to a neutral spine, begin here to curl your toes under, spread your fingertips wide. And then an inhale, bring your hips up and back, coming here perhaps into the first downward dog of the day, certainly our first downward dog of practice. We're going to keep this a dynamic Adho Mukha Svanasana. So I'm bending my knees, coming forward as I exhale, and then as I inhale, pressing back. And so just let this be like a little wave of motion, naturally synchronizing with your breath. Good. And the next time you come back into that Adho Mukha Svanasana, so we're going to find a little stillness here. So heels could be lifted high. That's just fine. Knees might stay nice and bent here, and that's okay. Do keep your neck nice and long, head as heavy, gaze as backwards. And let yourself just sink back into this full breath, full inhale, full exhale. Use your inhale, lift your gaze, walk your toes forward. Next, inhale, bring your fingertips to your knees, lengthen your spine long. Exhale, draw your belly button in. Let yourself come into a full forward fold here. Really release the weight of your head down. Inhale, both hands to your hips, roll your shoulders open. Use your exhale, rise up into your mountain pose here. Inhale, reaching upwards. Exhale, Anjali Mudra, hands to heart. Release your hands by your side, separate your feet wider than your hips, soften yourself side to side, let your arms be loose here. Yeah, bring yourself back towards center. Good, so as we come to standing, rolling the shoulders back a few times, we're gonna keep those feet slightly separate. So a little bit of space, slightly wider than your hips between your feet. Um, if you're wearing glasses here or a necklace you're, that, that's a little longer. You're going to want to remove those. Moving here into our breath of joy. Breath of joy is another weaving together of breath and movement. So the movement with our breath of joy is three times arms. So yeah, arms out is the first movement. Arms up is the second movement. Arms out to the side is the third. And the fourth is we just let ourselves kind of pour forward into a forward fold. And so it's hard to see because I'm leaning towards the camera, but my knees here are bending. So it's not a straight leg pulling on my spine forward fold. It's an easy kind of sweep forward. And then we come right back up into it. So it's our one, two, three, four, right? So that's the movement. The breath is three sharp inhales through your nose if you're able to. So it looks like, and then a long exhale. Oh, you could even add that little sigh. So the breath is, oh, right? And so the way this layers together is we've got breath inwards here, breath inwards here, breath inwards here. Here's a long exhale as you pour yourself forward into this breath of joy practice, okay? And so we'll begin. 
Last one. Ha. Bring yourself back up to standing. Let's bring one hand to your heart, one to your belly. If we're not dizzy, close the eyes. If we're dizzy, keep the eyes halfway open, gaze down. Let's feel that generation of energy that pose created now. Yeah. Feel how open your lungs are here. And the namesake of this, this little Kriya we just practiced, our breath of joy, you might feel that little burst of happiness of joy within you. And as we're ready, we'll open the eyes if they're not already open. Bring yourself back towards center. Here's where if you're working with blocks, you might want to grab a couple of blocks, set them by the top line of your yoga mat. Not necessary if you don't have them, but nice to have. Let's come to that top line of your mat. Sweep all 10 fingers up. Lift your sternum, lift your gaze. Standing back bend here as you exhale, snuggle your shoulders consciously inwards. Inhale, stretching through all 10 fingers and the peeling upwards of your heart. Exhale, bring yourself forward and down into your Uttanasana. Take your half rise here, Ardha Uttanasana, then exhale, soften in. Maybe grab onto your blocks, big step back with those right toes. Lower your right knee all the way down to the ground. And let's bring both hands to the left knee. Now, if your right knee is a little achy here, maybe you'll give that some extra padding, maybe an extra blanket behind that right knee. Good, so my right toes are curled under. It gives me a little more stability. If you want a little more openness, you could uncurl the toes. No right or wrong answer here. Use your inhale, stretch upwards. Join all but your pointer finger here. So all of your fingers interlace, pointer finger stays long. Pull your thumbs open, lift your gaze. Big inhale here, find some nice length. And then exhale, maybe soften ever so slightly forward, softening the hips forward. Inhale here, connect with that arch of your spine. Exhale, softening forward, breathing here. Good, let's exhale, bring both hands down, find the blocks or find the floor. Curl your right toes under if they're not already. Lift your right knee up and away from the ground. Right knee lengthens, coming here into that tall lunge. Good, might stay here, might bring your right hand to your hip, rotate those right toes down, maybe left elbow wants to come to the left knee. Or if we're still using blocks or bringing that left hand down, Maybe that left hand wants to come to the inside instead of the outside of the left foot. So transitioning here into our extended wide angle pose. Let's roll our top shoulder open. Bring your whole shoulder girdle slightly backwards. Maybe that right arm wants to extend forward. Gaze here could be up forward or down. Good, bringing that right hand back to your hip if it's not there already. Release that right heel, bring both hands down, frame your front foot, bring that right knee back down to the ground here. Good, keeping that right knee down, plant your right hand here. Left hand might come to the left knee, might stretch up towards the sky. Gaze up forward or down, breathing here. On an inhale, let's lower your lifted hand. If we have blocks here, scoot your blocks out of the way so that both hands can come easily to the ground. Curl your right toes under if they're not already. Peel that right knee up and invite your left foot back, coming here into your Adho Mukha Svanasana, a little downward facing dog. Your body might be wiggly here. You might wanna take that dynamic dog that we took earlier, or you might be in stillness. 
even if the outer body is still, the inner body is nice and active, breath filled. Let's inhale, lift your gaze, lift your heels, use your exhale, walk it forward. Take your half rise here, Ardha Uttanasana, then exhale, soften in. Invite both hands to your hips, both elbows point up, use your exhale, rise up here. Inhale, reaching upwards. Exhale, Anjali Mudra, hands to heart center. Good, coming back if you're not there already to that top line of your yoga mat, use your inhale, sweep up. Snuggle your shoulders inwards, peel your heart open here. Another big inhale, come into our standing back bend and then exhale, we're gonna need opposite direction, coming forward into that forward fold. Take your half rise, soften inwards. Maybe your hands find the blocks, the left toes now step back, left kneel, softening down onto the ground, onto a waiting blanket. And then bring both hands to that top knee. Good, so again, back toes here could be curled under. That'll give you a little more stability. You might uncurl to soften the hips forward. Either way, let's inhale, sweep your 10 fingers up. Always an option to bend at your elbows here. Up at the pointer finger is joined. Heart is lifting, gaze is lifting, side body lengthens here. Breathing and extending those lifted fingers up and back and then softening your hips forward here. I'm sending this nice openness here in this Anjanasana. Next exhale, bring your hands through heart center all the way down to waiting blocks or the ground. Let's curl your back toes under if they're not already. Peel that back knee upwards. And then we'll transition here into our Pars Vokanasana. So maybe that front elbow wants to come to your knee. Maybe it wants to come to a waiting block in the inside edge of the front foot. Opposite hand comes to your hip and then roll that top shoulder open. Maybe the gaze lifts here, maybe it lowers. Maybe this hand stays in your hip or maybe we lengthen forward. Either way, fill this space with the prana, the energy of yoga. Good, and let's send that back hand back to your hip if it's not there already. Rotate so that your heart and hips are facing downwards. Bring that back knee down to the ground. Good, release any block here you might be using so your hand can come fully to the earth and then we'll twist towards that front knee. So hand might stay down in your knee here or those fingertips might peel upwards. And then an inhale, coming back towards center, snuggling that hand underneath its shoulder, curling under your back toes, lifting that knee upwards. Let's bring it back into our downward dog here, coming to stillness or dynamic motion. Letting your awareness here settle fully on your breath. Let's inhale, lift your heels upwards, lift your gaze, use your exhale, walk your toes forward. Find your Ardha Uttanasana, half lift here, inhale up, then exhale, soften in. Bring both hands to your hips, roll your shoulders open, use your exhale, rise up here. Inhale, stretch tall. Exhale, Anjali Mudra, heart center. And let's begin to separate your feet widely here. Take those blocks if you're using them, we're going to set one block on each short end of your yoga mat. Then when it comes to that toes are facing the long end of your yoga mat, feet are widening here. Nice big inhale, extend your arms outwards. Nice open star pose here. As you exhale, lower down, bring your hands down in front of your shoulders. 
breathing here. Let's begin to rotate toes to the left. So both toes are just gonna angle towards the left side of the mat. As we do that, we're gonna walk our hands over to the left. Toes to the left, hands walking to the left. So we get to bend into your left knee. Right leg's gonna stay straight. Bring your left hand to your left knee and then bring yourself up. And let's let the legs open up here, transitioning here to a warrior. A funny way to come into the warrior, but finding our way here. Good, extend outwards through your 10 fingers, draw your shoulder blades towards each other. Press downwards into the heels, lengthen your spine upwards. Bring both hands to your hips here, straighten into your left leg, walk that right leg halfway in. Good, lean forward, grab a hold of that block in front of your left foot. Inhale, lift your hand with block up to shoulder height. Exhale, we're gonna bend once more into that left knee. Settle the block in front of your left pinky toe. Plant your hand down, lift your right foot upwards. Good. So here, just finding our balance, right? Press through your lifted heel. Draw those toes in towards your body. Really activate that lifted leg. And then we'll begin to rotate toes outwards, right toes outwards. Right knee, right hip, belly button, heart, all opening to this long side of your yoga mat. And then maybe the right fingertips want to leave your hip. Maybe that right knee wants to bend. I'm taking a hold of the right foot. I said right and I meant left. <laughs> Just realized we're on the right side. Good, so here, if we have that bind, releasing here, opening back up into our Ardha Chandrasana. Bring that lifted hand to your hip, bend into that front foot, lower the back foot down. We're turning to wide legs, two feet down, two hands up. Big inhale. Exhale, bring it forward, wide leg forward fold, hands underneath your arms, spine long here, more than curved. Hands pressing down, gaze down, stretching the crown of your head forward, sit bones backwards, spine here more or less parallel to the ground. Begin to rotate both toes to the left. Rotating both toes to the left. Begin to walk your hands over to the left. And then we'll come bending into our left knee. Right hand's gonna come to the right hip, left elbow to left knee, and then bring yourself up. Good. So adjusting your feet as you need to, to come into this Virabhadrasana too. So front knee, now opposite leg is bent. Arms are going to come to shoulder height. Gaze is going to look over those fingertips that hover over your bent knee. And in here, seek the spaces in your body. So one of these spaces, fingers stretching outward, shoulders drawing inward, is going to create a little open space in front of your heart. Another space can be found by pressing down into your heels, extending up through the crown of your head, again, creating space in your thoracic cavity, space for your lungs to inflate. Good, let's exhale, hands to hips. Step your back foot slightly inwards. Lean forwards, grab a hold of your waiting block. Inhale, lift your hand up to shoulder height. Exhale, lean down, plant your block in front of the pinky toes of your standing leg. Lift your opposite leg upwards here. You're lifting that opposite leg up to hip height. So we start here, gaze down. It's a lot more steadying, a lot more grounding. And then bringing your awareness to your lifted leg, we're going to find the yogi foot lock that's padabandha. Press through your heel, draw your toes inwards, make as if you're making a footprint on the wall behind you. And then we'll just begin to open, rotating the toes and your knees and hips outwards. Belly, button, heart, chin and eyes. 
Maybe that hand wants to stretch up towards the sky away from your hip coming here to your half moon. Maybe you'd like to take the bind on this side, bending into your lift and knee, reaching backwards, grabbing a hold of your foot. Releasing that bind if you have it. Bring the hand back down to your hip, releasing that back foot down, coming all the way up to standing. Two feet down, 10 toes pointing forward, 10 fingers shining upwards. Big inhale here. Then exhale, bring yourself forward into that prostrate apatitanasana. Take that half lift. Maybe draw your blocks inwards. Lift halfway up. Stretch your crown forward, stretch your sit bones backwards, and then changing the height of your blocks, let your spine round. Gaze comes backwards here. Breath softening here. Let's inhale, begin to walk your hands forward. Heel, toe, or walk your feet in towards each other. And then bend into your knees. Bring yourself all the way down to the ground. And as we come to the ground, swing your feet forward. Keep your knees pointing upwards. Soften your body here down to the ground. So coming onto your back body. So keep your 10 toes pointing forward, press into your heels, lift your hips up, stretch your arms up and over your head. Exhale, soften your hips down, your hands down by your side. So just coming into a nice, easy bridge pose, inhaling, lifting your hips up, maybe sweeping the arms up, exhaling, softening down. And the next time you find your hips lifting, maybe if you'd like to try a static variation, maybe the hands will stay down. So the hips come up, hands stay down. Keep your pressing into your heels and draw your shoulders and hands towards each other behind your back. Perhaps there the hands will even join. Resting here, always an option instead of this shape to place a block or blocks underneath your sacrum supporting you here. But in here, if the hands are intertwined, release them from each other. If we have blocks beneath the body, scoot those out of the way as you lower your hips down to the ground. Press here into your hips, lift and shift your hips right. Bring your knees to the left here. Let your right arm extend long to the right. Rotate your gaze to the right. Left hand could come on top of that top knee here. Coming into our nice reclining twist. And let's inhale, bringing it back to center. And pressing here into your feet, lift and shift your hips ever so slightly left. Bring both knees to the right, extend your left arm long, gaze rotates towards the left. Breathing into this twist. And then an inhale, let's bring it back to center. And taking a moment here, hug both knees inwards, maybe lift your nose and chin upwards, make a little ball. 
And then let your body lengthen long here, coming into your Shavasana. And here, if you started with layers, you might want to end with layers as we come to this still point of our practice, the body will begin to cool. So if you had some socks on as we began, you might return those. You might place that sweater lightly over your body if you're working with one. And here as you come to your back, if your low back is talking to you, go ahead and slip a block underneath each knee. Give yourself some support under your knees, maybe even a blanket or a pillow if you have access to that. Let your hands rest easy by your side here. Let your eyes close. Give the full weight of your body to the support beneath you. Let any lingering tension drain out here. Let your body come to a full state of relaxation, full state of ease. Breathing here. Let's begin here to bring your awareness gently back to your breath. And as our awareness returns to the breath, you can define some light movements into your fingers and your toes. your wrists, your ankles. And coming as you're ready, take a nice big full body stretch. Reach your fingers backwards, stretch your toes forward. Bring both knees in towards your chest. 
wrap your arms around your knees, give yourself some movement side to side. And come to rest easy on one side. Use your top arm pressing down to bring your body up to a seat. And then as we come to the seat, let's, let's come back to this touching inwards that we began with. So settle one hand over your heart, press the other hand down to the ground. Let your eyes soften or close and your chin draw inwards as you bring your inner gaze down. And here, feeling into the whole body as you inhale. Notice your body's response to this in breath. And then shifting your focus, notice the way your body softens as you exhale. Feel the sensation of fully releasing the breath in your lungs outwards. I'm reconnecting with that intention that we touched base with at the beginning of class. Know that each time you come to your mat, you help reinforce that intention. And we'll close here with the sound of Om. Join your hands together. Nice big inhale. Om. Bowing inwards here, thank yourself for creating this time to connect with your breath, to connect with your practice. So grateful to share this practice with you. Namaste.